Welcome to the Jeeps Exchange Virtual Conference. Hi, I'm Dean Wedekin with MaxiLift, and this is one of the concurrent sessions, the technical sessions of the exchange today. And today we're going to be talking about bucket elevator maintenance, one of my favorite topics. And we're going to talk about a number of issues, but to start out with, for the first 45 minutes or so, it'll be a presentation like this uh, that we filmed right here in our studio in Addison, Texas at MaxiLift. And then after that, we're going to have a live question and answer time, about 10 minutes or so. So if you have questions that you've thought of before you came today or that come up during the presentation, make sure and write those down in some way to remember them, and you'll be able to ask us live at the end of this presentation. So today we're going to talk about a lot of different topics, uh, belting, buckets, lagging, uh, lining material, sensors, throat plates, a number of things that are going to make a difference in your capability of your bucket elevator. And I want you to know that uh, when you see some of the photos that are going to be in this presentation, they're photos that I've taken in the last year or so at the bucket elevator inspections that I've done, uh, I think it's a great privilege when I have the opportunity to get out and visit a facility and actually spend time in the facility. So I'm going to come prepared, whether it's 95 degrees or 12 degrees, or whatever the case might be, I'm going to come prepared, insulated coveralls, hard hat, boots, whatever the case might be. Just want to tell you about a couple of the applications that I had where I went to a small grain facility uh, this last winter and as I was climbing to the head section because I wanted to do an inspection of the, uh, the head as well as the boot and everything else, I noticed that the trunking was kind of poofed out and it's not supposed to be that way. So when I got back down to the, to the ground, I asked the maintenance manager, I said, did you have a non-catastrophic explosion in this bucket elevator? And he said, yes, we did. Some tramp metal got into the bucket elevator. We had steel buckets on at the time and we don't know if it was because it hit one of the steel buckets or the side of the trunking, but it caused an explosion. It didn't destroy the facility, but it did bulge out the trunking, as you can see in some of these photos. Now, something that could help there is to put a magnet in your inlet. Get that tramp metal out before it ever goes in. And obviously, getting rid of the steel buckets was an important step, too. Another facility I went to, another small grain facility that was this fall, and once again doing a bucket elevator inspection as I climbed to the top, once again I noticed the bulging trunking. You'll notice from this photo that I've got there that it almost looks round, which there are definitely round trunking bucket elevators made out of pipe. They're actually fairly common, but if it's not pipe, then it shouldn't be rounded like that. And once again, found out when I got back down that uh, years ago they had had maintenance going on to a screw conveyor that feeds the boot of this bucket elevator. And they were welding, and some of the welding sparks went down the transition into the boot, caused a fire, caused an explosion, and it bulged out the trunking. The flame went up, the explosion went up, and flames came out the loadout spout. So it was quite a, uh, a situation there, pretty scary for everyone. The manager now was an employee at the time in the office, and he said it sounded like a train had come off the tracks. So that can be a pretty devastating situation. Maintenance can help take care of some of those situations, whether it's maintenance on the bucket elevator or understanding maintenance in the rest of your facility. So we're gonna get into these topics now. We hope that you enjoy our time together. So sit back and enjoy the presentation.